Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. I started work on a cool little project recently. It's a credit card sized uh, scientific calculator slash computer. And, uh, you know, I thought I'd have a go at it just for fun. And I, I was originally going to have it battery powered, but then I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have it solar powered, completely self-contained, solar powered. So I, I, I knew that solar cell, you know, you can get solar powered calculators, you can get solar powered credit card calculators. They've been around for like 20 years. You know, there's nothing new there. But the problem with these solar powered calculators that have been on the market for 20 years is that they're, they're really, they're tiny powered. They, the solar cells generate virtually no current at all. And they got extremely low power custom ASICs in there, um, application specific integrated circuit that uh, allow them to get the really low power consumption. They only operate at tens of kilohertz. But uh, my new project, I was going to have a full dot matrix LCD on it, like a 132 by 32 uh, dot matrix display. And the module I was looking at using took uh, around about 100 microamps uh, at uh, about 2.4 volts and upwards. So, you know, it's, it's not a huge amount of power, but I knew that for a solar powered design, especially something as small as a credit card, was going to be a challenge, but I thought maybe it's possible. So I thought I'd have a go at it. Now, last time I worked on a solar powered design, I think it was like Oh, the 1990s or something like that. So it's it's been a long time, and everyone knows that there's been you know massive progress in uh, in the efficiency and design of solar cells in the last 10, 20 years. Um, you know, a massive advance. So I knew I couldn't really uh, get that sort of uh, current or power out of just a typical little calculator solar cell, but I thought I'd try and have a look at what's available on the market and get the best available on the market. You know, price wasn't really an object. So I thought I'd get one of these. It's an Ixus, I think that's how you pronounce it, an IXYS branded uh, monocrystalline solar cell surface mount. They're really cool little devices. They're designed uh, for applications like um, you know, charging mobile phones and charging PDAs and other type portable devices. Um, so they're monocrystalline, so they're the highest efficiency you can get. I think they're like 15, 16% efficient or something like that. So they're really top class and they're not cheap. They're like $5 each or, you know, and these put out about uh, one and a half each, um, well, this one's got three cells in. It puts about out about one and a half volts at up to 12 milliamps in full sun. And oh, you can fly to the moon on 12 milliamps. It's a huge amount of power. So I thought, aha, uh -huh, these might be suitable for my project. All I need is 100 microamps or so. Is it possible? And I just, I didn't do any calculations on paper. I just did a few rough numbers. And, you know, I thought maybe, maybe it's possible. But, uh, you know, I'm a practical guy, so I got some and I tried to measure them to see what I could get. Now, a regular solar power calculator like this Casio, as you can see, this one's, it's got an internal battery, but it's dead. But it, uh, see, it works uh, on the solar cell just in the very poorly lit um, EEV blog lab here. But, uh, you know, it, it works. I can sort of half cover that. Thing, you know, I half cover it and it, it really, they are really quite remarkable. And these don't use monocrystalline cells. They typically use uh, amorphous uh, solar cells, which are only about, you know, five, six percent efficient as opposed to these monocrystalline ones I planned on using, which were, you know, the super duper latest technology, which are much more efficient. So here it is. I've got um, three of these in series, which if I hook it up to Let's do some things. And as you can see, this is the in the lab here, and I'm getting out 3.4 volts. Yeah, no worries. Great. But if I... Let's measure the current of this thing, this short circuit current. You can actually do this with solar cells. It's actually quite valid to measure the uh, short circuit current. So you just hook it straight up to your meter in current mode shorts it out, but you can get a really good indication of its operational current capability by just shorting it out. So, as you can see, not, oh, that's AC, 
bloody fluke multimeter that defaults to AC. It's crap. Oh, anyway, here you go. 30 odd microamps. Okay, that's its short circuit current. Uh, but you know, if I lay it down on the bench here, it, you know, it's about 25 microamps. And if I put my if I put my hand over the cell a bit, it, it, it drops down. So, you know, really I'm only getting under uh, typical conditions in like an inside environment here where these, uh, you know, these really ultra low power calculators work just fine. This thing's only given me, you know, tens of microamps. So really that sort of, you know, very disappointed. My project just wasn't really viable because the LCD alone would take a hundred microamps. So project scrapped right there. I was pretty disappointed. Not, not terribly surprised though, I guess, because um, uh, really when you actually think about it and you look at the figures and you go through the math, I really didn't have to uh, try this in practice to know that it really wasn't going to work. But, you know, I was hopeful. I thought that, you know, hope could overcome engineering, but no, nah, afraid not. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Maybe all the data sheet values were just bullshit. Does it actually give out 12 milliamps in, you know, in under ideal conditions? Well, I'm outside. Let's find out. It's about um, almost 6.30 at night at the moment. But uh, as you can see, I've got, the, got it pointed towards the sun. And sure enough, there it is, 11 milliamps. So it can actually get close to that 12 milliamp figure. No problems at all. So there you go. These things aren't bullshit. The data sheet is... Is right on the money. These are top quality cells. They give out 12 milliamps at their rated voltage of one and a half volts or something like that. So they really are quite remarkable. Uh, they're, uh, so you really could uh, charge a mobile phone in full sun with one of these little things easily. So why doesn't it work inside? Why doesn't it work indoors? Well, the answer is really obvious with a couple of seconds thought. It's about dynamic range and dynamic range of these things. The human eye has a massive dynamic range. It spreads, it's about uh, 90 dB or something like that. It's a huge range. That's why you can go outside in a, on a fully sunlit day and you can see things perfectly and, and yet, yet you can just walk inside and your eyes adjust fairly quickly. It takes, the response time is an instant but it adjusts and then you can go outside at night under, under moonlight and see things. So that's a huge dynamic range in the order of 90 dB. Okay, so let's take a look at some figures here. Now, a 90 dB range is approximately, it's a bit over, but it's approximately 30,000 to 1 ratio, which, which your eye is capable of seeing over. And so you perceive anything within that range to be, you know, Fairly similar, I guess you could say. Now the sun, when you're outside, is about 300,000 lumens. Let's round it down to that. I think it's a bit more, but let's say it's 300,000 lumens. Now indoor lighting uh, might be around about 300 lumens. Say I've got two uh, fluoro tubes in here and in the lab here, and that's and that's about it. So I, I don't actually have a lux meter to actually measure it, but you know, it's gonna be around about in the order of 300 lumens. So the ratio of that to that is, of course, a thousand. Now, if I'm getting, say, 10 milliamps at, in full sun, okay, that's, uh, then you can divide that by this thousand, ratio of a thousand, and bingo, I'm only gonna get 10 microamps indoors. And sure enough, that's what I measure. And so, you know, really, it's, it's fairly obvious uh, when you go through the math that, you know, do some simple calculations that it's not really possible. But I was hoping that it was possible because, you know, I thought, oh, you know, you can put them in parallel as well. You can put them in series and parallel combinations. So maybe if I got enough of them in parallel, I can only fit a certain number on my product. But if I got enough, it might be able to work indoors, but really, no. So the project, so the idea of powering my project from solar cells is really pretty much a no-go, unless I used a uh, seven-segment display LCD instead of those dot matrix ones. Then I could probably get around. Then I could probably do it. I could use a 
low power processor like an MSP430 or a microchip nanowatt XLP or something like that and uh, with a seven segment display run at 32 kilohertz it's still possible but that's that's not really as cool as, as the full dot matrix display I wanted to use so oh well yeah I know I'm talking in terms of just current and things like that when I should be really talking about power but these are just sort of you know ballpark uh, calculations really that um, you know it's 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 really going to be of the same order so it's you know you can just for a rough back of the envelope calculations for a design such as this it's it's perfectly all right just to measure the short circuit current and if you're working at low enough voltages it's not it's not really an issue so what's the moral of the story well you can't just hope your next project's going to work you know if you're trying to do something like this you have to you have to really look at the facts and figures carefully uh, before you think something's possible and get your hopes up because really you know a couple of simple measurements or or just some uh, thinking about it up front really can show that a project is not possible and you know I know that kind of sucks but you know you, because really you know as Doc Brown said if you put your mind to it you can accomplish anything but Sometimes you can't. Ah, oh, well.